Hello everyone, my name is Tim, and we want you to be a super tech. So in order to get that goal, we want to teach you a little bit today about Meggy Motors. That's millions of ohms, and it's reference to checking windings going to ground. Now, there are many different ways to wind a motor, and there are many different kinds of motors. And what we're talking about is how am I winding this stator winding, okay? We're going to talk a little about single phase and three phase. And keep in mind, you should always look at your manufacturer specs to find out how your motor is wired. And today, we're just going to talk about general rules. Now, as a general rule, motors are wound in either a Y configuration with three wires. Each one of these represents a winding in the motor. One of those windings could be one of these. So it can have three sets of windings, and each set of windings is about 120 degrees off of each other. So, three sets of windings. If I wanted to make this motor, I'd have to disconnect it here, mag each lead to ground, and mag each winding to ground, which I'll explain in just a minute. You can also have a delta configuration, where I still have one, two, and three leads coming out of the motor, still a single speed, single horsepower um, motor, but is wired differently according to the needs of that application. Now, some wire, Motors can be wired as Y delta, so they can start out in a Y configuration and run in a delta configuration. So, for example, a 9 lead motor might be that way, and I may have to disconnect all of the leads to do my magneting, for example, on a centrifugal chiller, or a large rotary chiller, those kinds of things. Those would often have a Y delta start, okay? I can also have configuration like this where I have now six leads. And you notice I have two sets of windings here, two sets. So in order to make this, I have to physically disconnect these sets of windings to do that. So when you're making a motor, you want to disconnect all the leads. Also, I have another one over here, a delta wound, showing it in just a different configuration with six leads as well. And each one of these represents a set of windings. In order to make the windings to windings, I would have to disconnect them here isolate the windings from each other. Now there are many kinds of meggers that I can use. There's some old school, like this. You have to crank it, okay? You have to crank it like this to build up the voltage, and you have your leads that one of these leads will be connected to ground and one of them will be connected to the motor winding that you're testing. You also have something like this, where I can test one lead to ground and one lead to the motor lead that I'm testing, set it to mega ohms, and push the button. Okay? Now there's also ones between those that simply say, got a good mega or bad mega. Well, I simply say to you, what does good mean? What does bad mean? You're not really comparing what it was to what it is, so you really need to get something a little bit better than that. Fortunately, with modern technology, we've come up with some new ideas. So this is a FLIR um, bagger. Same idea, one of the leads is going to go to ground, one of the leads is going to go to your motor winding, and you're going to set it to the appropriate voltage. Now the appropriate voltage is, for example, if I have a motor that's 460, well, I'm going to set it to something as close to 460 as I can. If I go over that, technically it is called, you know, high potting, putting it over the voltage, and it could theoretically damage the winding, okay? So in this case, I might put it to 50 or 500, you know, depending on the multi voltage of my motor, okay? We also have a fluke style. This has, you set it to max. And you set it the appropriate voltage. I have this one set to 500. I have one lead set to ground. And I simply come over here. And this one is nice because it's got a little button on it. And I simply attach it to one of the leads to ground. And I push the button to find out what my magnet is. Now, if it's above met one mega ohm, I can usually start this motor but I'm going to want to investigate why it's so low. Maybe I have moisture on the connections, maybe there's dirt on the windings, maybe if it's a compressor, there's a problem internally, 
whether it's moisture or contaminants. So that's netting the ground. Now, also what I want to do, if you look at this one, you can see some of the windings are physically tied together. I'm going to want to remove those so that I can physically go winding to winding. So now I would simply go attach my lead here, and if this was another set of windings, I would click, touch them, click the button, and do the magging. Motors come in various shapes and sizes. They can also come in different wire colors. So in this one, all the wire colors are relatively the same, but they should be labeled, for example, T1, T2, T3, etc., depending on the number of leads I have to make for Y, Delta, or the different speeds. Other motors, they'll come in different colors, reds and blues and purples and all kinds of fun little colors. And you'll have, they'll also generally be numbered as well, T1, T2, T3, but you'll need to look at the motor data plate to figure out exactly how it's wired and how you should wind or test the wind. Now, if I was to test this motor right here, first of all, I go between each one of these leads, and let's say that this is ground on the motor. If I go to ground, I have my meter set to the appropriate voltage, I go to the lead. With my incoming leads, power leads disconnected. Push the button, I do a measurement. Push the button, I do the measurement. Push the button, I do the measurement. Okay? Then what I want to do, and I want to go winding to winding, is generally, especially if you have variable frequency drives, you don't have a short to ground, you have a short to winding to winding. So you go turn on, you think it's okay, because you just magged it between T1, T2, and 3 to ground, and it read over a, a 1 mega ohm or 100 mega ohms or whatever it happens to be. Turn on the power, the motor blows up. Lights in the building go dead. Okay? Egg all over your face, and you're no longer super tech. And we want you to be a super tech. So what we're going to do is wherever this is tied in, we're going to disconnect it. So our connection point right here is this connection right here that would be insulated and taped up. Now that they're separate, I'm going to take one lead and attach it to here. Take the other lead and put it over on this winding. Hit my test button, or the button that I have on here in this particular case, and it should read over one mega. If it reads less than one mega ohm, or whatever it was last time you read it, if it reads less, it tells you you have a problem in these set of windings. Okay? So, now I'm going to go winding to winding. So I might put it to one lead, to here, and then I'm going to go here, mega, here, mega, with this disconnected, to make sure that I have less than one, or greater than one mega ohm. On this one, I disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, and back from this lead on this winding to this one. So maybe to here. From this line to this one. And make sure that I had at least 100 megs. On my single phase, I had a common start and run. I disconnect my leads to it, go to common, go to and back to here, and go from here to here if that's possible on the single phase motor. Okay? Some motors it may not be possible because it's connected internally. On here, I would disconnect here. Disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, and it goes between this winding and this winding, this winding and this winding, and etc. So I go from here to here, 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 and then from here to here, here to here, here to here, between each set of windings. On this one, I disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here, disconnect here. And now I measure between this set of windings, this set of windings, this set of windings, this set of windings, and this set of windings. And then I go from this one to this one to this one to this one. So the idea is you need to go from winding to winding to winding. So that is my game. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again. Tim out.